Hello everyone, welcome back. Today I thought I would show you a fun little art project that I did for myself this past week. In the past, I have been known to do a pen and ink drawing or two. I tend to do these kind of abstract doodles. It's kind of like meditative, I'm not really going for anything. But recently I have found myself wanting to incorporate more color into my drawings. And I tend to do my drawings when I'm out and about on the town. So I thought I would make myself a travel watercolor kit. And I thought I would hop on the hype train, the Altoid Tin watercolor kit that you can make yourself, especially if you have a 3D printer. And I had this idea kicking around. It's not a new idea, but I found the absolute perfect tin to do this with. What could be more perfect than our artistic lord and savior, Bob Ross? I will warn you that if you don't go with an Altoid brand tin or one that is very similar, the insert may not fit. Or you could just make your own out of some plastic sheets and some super glue that you have laying around the house and then it doesn't matter. So I went on to Thingiverse and I found this watercolor tray insert and I thought it was almost perfect for my needs but one thing I wanted to modify was I wanted to put a little mixing palette into the corner, just a little one. So I brought the model into Tinkercad and I just cut out a little section in the corner so I would have a little more space to do some color experimentation. And it printed out very easily. I just used some silk PLA. I would have preferred to use some standard PLA, but silk was all I had. I went with white so that I could get a clear look at the colors I had in my tray. Then I went and sealed the print with some lacquer just to make sure it was totally watertight. I wasn't gonna have any, you know, leakage. Next was my color selection. I just used these watercolors that I had laying around the house. And the most important colors to have in a DIY watercolor kit are five colors. They are black and white to adjust the values of your colors and then red, yellow, and blue. And with these five colors, you can create pretty much any color that you could possibly want. Anything else is just icing on the cake. And lucky for me, I had plenty of room for icing. So I went up and filled the rest of the tray with an assortment of other colors. We had some darker reds, we had a teal, we had some brown, and that just makes life a little bit easier, but you really only need those five. And then for my personal preference, I have this greenish teal that I like to use a lot. So I went ahead and mixed up a little square of that to be its own dedicated color. But of course, if I'm gonna be out and about on the town mixing up watercolors, I'm gonna need to clean my brush. So I went ahead and got just like an automotive sponge and cut it to the shape of my lid and I glued it in there with some tacky glue. This glue is water soluble, but it's still pretty strong. So the idea is that I can change the sponge out if I ever need to, but it'll also hold securely in the meantime unless I get it like totally drenched. And I found if you're going to be trying this yourself that it is best to cut the sponge down to about like five millimeters of thickness, maybe about a quarter of an inch. The thinner you can get it, the easier the lid will close, but the thicker it is, the more you're going to be able to use it. So it's, it's about finding a balance between functionality of opening and closing your contraption and cleaning your brushes. And speaking of brushes, I'm just using these cheap synthetic brushes. To be honest, they're pretty fantastic. You fill up the handle with water and then you just take them wherever you want and you can watercolor to your heart's content. By the way, I will have everything linked up in the video description if you want to embark on this adventure for yourself. Those are affiliate links, and all that means is that if you choose to click on them, the website will recognize that I sent you there, and they'll give me some kickback for having sent you to their website. It doesn't cost you anything extra, but it's an excellent way to support the show. Another excellent way is to hit that like button, and maybe even consider subscribing if you like this kind of content. But enough self-promotion, let us get to the demonstration. And here, I am just drawing out a simple little doodle, you know, nothing, nothing objective, just kind of my style. And after filling up your watercolor tray, you really want to let your watercolors dry completely before painting with them. I did my best with this, but I was a little bit impatient. So you can see I have some pretty thick colors going down, and that's just because I didn't let them dry completely. Still worked out fine, and I've used it since, and it's been pretty great. This is one of those projects that I love to do. It's just so simple, but so effective. And really just finding that Bob Ross tin really tied the whole thing together, I think really kicked it up a notch. So I'm very happy with how it turned out. And I think it looks really cool. I'm really excited to start using it in my arting when I'm out and about. And I wish you well on your artistic journey. All right, 
Take it easy, everybody. I will see you next time.